Hey guys, check out these solves with the roux method. Now I don't usually use roux, which is why I'm not turning very fast, but holy, look at that time. Welcome to roux, where you don't have to turn fast to get good times. So here's a few more solves, but basically this video is going to be an overview of the Roux method. It's kind of like a tutorial, but I'm not going to go too in-depth into the steps. It's more of just an introduction for how Roux works and what are the really creative things you can do with it and why it's such a nice method. So with white top and green front, here's the scramble I'm using. So the first step in Roux is to make all of F2L, but without the front and back cross edges. So you essentially have like a big block over here and a big block over here. So what I'm going to do here is start by pairing up this blue and red. And then I'm going to add the red white piece to it, which is over here. So like this. So I'm going to move this over here, move this down and connect this one to it like that. So here I'm doing a lot of cube rotations. Normally there would be no cube rotations, but I'm just trying to show visually what's going on. Then next we have this, which got, uh, we got kind of lucky here. So I can just insert that here like that. So now I finished this block down here and next I have to do another block the same way on orange. So here's the orange white piece. I can just attach it in here like this. Now I see this pair over here. And what you might do in CFOP is just move it all to the top. But with Roux, what you should actually do is separate the corner from the edge. And then now what you can do is move the corner to the other side and do M2, and that pairs them together. So there's some really cool pairing tricks you can do because the M slice is freed up. Now we can just connect it to the edge over here. And then now we have these two left. So what we could do with CFOP, we could do it like this, which would have the pair at the back. So preferably what we could do instead is move this down into the bottom layer, move the edge down, then move this one back over here. Now in order to insert this into here all at once, you can just do it like this. Really cool tricks if you're just used to CFOP. So the amount of techniques you can use to make first two blocks is actually huge compared to what you can do in F2L. And it's mostly intuitive and you don't really have to rotate. So that's a really nice advantage of first two blocks. So the next step that we actually skipped is called CMLL, which has 42 algorithms and that solves the last layer corners, which we happen to have already solved. If you do two look CMLL, there are only seven algorithms. So let me just set up a case. So here you would recognize the corner orientation first, just like you would for OLL, and then for the second look of OLL, and then you would do the algorithm for it. And then next you would just get a Y perm or a J perm, and then you can just do that. And that solves all the corners. All right, next what we do is orient all of the edges. So there are six possible edges, four in the top layer and two in the bottom. An oriented edge is white or yellow on top or bottom. So these two are oriented, these two are not, and these two are not. So for this part, realistically, if you wanna get fast at it, you can just kind of like memorize the cases, but they are really short, they're only M and U moves, and they can be intuitive. So the basic idea for this step is that if you do M prime, U prime, M, what that does is it orients the front three edges and the bottom one edge. And similarly, if you do the same thing mirrored to the back, then you would just get these three at the back and that one at the back change orientation. So if you can set up into a case where you have three misoriented in the top layer, one misoriented in the bottom layer, then you can just do one of those tricks and it will orient all of the edges. So here we do have four misoriented edges, but they're not at the right spot. So there's one more thing you can do. So the other thing you can do is M prime U2 M and really the M's can go in any direction. And what that does is it repositions some of the edges. So you can see this edge came from here, this edge came uh, from here, and the rest all belong to the top layer already. So since we already have four misoriented edges, then a nice way to solve this case would be to reposition one of the edges up to the top. So take this bad edge and reposition it up to the top like this. And then what we have now is three on top, three bad edges on top, one bad edge on the bottom. And this is just one of the basic cases that goes like this, M prime, U prime, M. So next what we do is we solve the left and right edges, the red and orange edges. So the red one belongs here and the orange one belongs over here. So here we have a bit of a lucky case where the red and orange are both in the bottom layer already, but I'll just show what happens if they weren't. So I did M prime U2 M to put the red one up here. So once you get one at the front and one at the back with them being split top and bottom, then what you do is M in any direction, U2, that puts them together, and then M to put them in the bottom layer. Next, what you do is you see red at the front, so you put orange over here. So red will go back here like that. So that solves the left and right edges. Next, what happens is if you line up these edges, then you just have a three cycle of edges to end off. So this one belongs here, which belongs here, which belongs here. So this is pretty intuitive if you think about it, is just a sequence of M's and U2's. And then that solves it. 
All right, so here I'm gonna have another example briefly. I see that we can pair up the orange and green together like this, and then the other edge is over here. So we can do D2 to put that, and then this one comes down like that. Next, we have this edge and this corner back here. So in order to pair up these two, what you can do is bring the corner up here and then push the edge back down there. Then move the corner over here and do M. Or in fact, the next block hasn't been done yet, so we can just do R prime instead. And then next we can just insert this one. All right, next we're doing the red block over here. So I see this corner, this edge, and this edge over here. So what I can do to join this edge to the center and also join this corner with this edge is do M prime, which puts this edge at the back, U, which joins up this and gets this one ready to pair up with this one, then R2. And then what that does is I have this pair now and I have this down here, so just insert. And then next I see this corner back here and this edge over here. So I can kind of just do this in an F2L sort of way, but in the F2L sort of way, you would rotate first to do it like this. But with Roo, you can just do U, move it over here, and then M prime. M prime always changes the orientation of the edge. So now we can just do this in the F2L kind of way. And on the last move, I'll do a wide move to get a white or yellow center on top. Next we do CMLL, and I'm just gonna do two look. So we do the corners first, and then do the edges. So these two are solved, so this will be a J perm. So now we have this unoriented edge and this unoriented edge. So what we can do is go like this, and do M prime, U prime, M. That sets up three bad in the top and one bad at the bottom. Then just do it like this. All right, next we have red over here and orange over here. Those are our side edges. So what I can do is place them opposite of each other. And since red is actually already solved, there's a cool trick you can do. You just do M prime, U2, M prime, and that just solves them. Next, we're just left with a three cycle at the end. So if any of that was confusing, uh, it probably just will be from the start. But if you do a lot of practice with Rue, then you can start seeing things that you would not have seen if you just did CFOB. So I'm gonna show some interesting inserts you can do in Rue that you may never have thought of if you'd only did CFOB. So we have this edge in here and we're trying to insert this corner edge pair. So what we could do instead of like reverse sledge or rotating, what you could just do is wide R, U, R prime, and that will insert it. So another thing you'll run into often is this edge over here and then the corner is already solved in here. So we're not gonna do it like in the beginner method where you do it like that, because that's a lot of rotations. And Ruth is a really nice way because of the freed up M slice. What you can do is do this, and then now you can pair them up using M and then reinsert it into here. So that's only five moves to insert an edge in here. So here's something that I find really cool, especially if you're used to CFOP. So here we are almost done the first block, except there's one corner missing and here it is. So in CFOP, the way we do this is with triple reverse sexy move like this. However, with Rue, you can insert this in here in four moves. Can you see it? So the answer is this. You move the bottom layer over so this slot becomes open, move this to the back and just drop it down in there. Then put this back. So you can see there's a ton of cool new efficient ways you can solve pairs in Rue. And if you just did everything in a very CFOP sort of way, then you're wasting a lot of moves. So it does take some time to get used to everything you can do in Rue. But once you get used to it, there are just tons of things and it just feels so much more free. The number one advantage when using Rue is that it has a lower move count than CFOP. In fact, the move count is a lot lower, so you can achieve the same times with a lot slower turning speed. However, while this is an advantage, it doesn't tell the whole story because with CFOP, you can do RUF instead of MU, which can be a lot faster. It's not always faster, but generally you will be able to do moves faster in OLL and PLL compared to LSE, which is Rue's step that has M and U moves. The next advantage is that it is rotationless. You build the first two blocks without rotating, and this is made possible thanks to a freed up M slice. And then the rest of the solve obviously is just an algorithm and then MU moves, so also no rotations there. One of the main downsides of Rue is that look ahead is difficult. This is because in CFOP with a solved cross, that is four solved pieces in the bottom already. And with Rue, you'll have one unsolved piece at the bottom during second block. And also the M slice is completely unsolved and keeps changing. Rue is also not as good on big cubes because M slices are very hard to do. But even though it doesn't seem this way, Rue is pretty good for one handed. So the reason why Rue is good one handed is because M slices actually require no rotations and can be pretty fast. I'm not good at them, but what you do is you put your hand against the table like this and M prime is done like this, M is done like that, and then U and U prime are done like this. 
And actually I'll have a ton of resources in the description, including beginner tutorials, because I didn't really go over everything in depth, YouTube channels of people who are really fast with Roo, and also more advantages and disadvantages of Roo compared to CFOP. So that's all the main points. Definitely check out the description if you want to learn more since I'm not a Roo expert myself. So I hope you found this video interesting. I hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys all next time.